So, uh, where were you? I mean, where? Back where to my you? grandpa. Uh, yeah, grandpa. My yeah. influencer. Uh, he's an interesting guy. Oh yeah, he's so interesting. He's yeah. He's like that puzzle you can't solve. But uh, puzzle. That's a koan, you know. I studied with a Zen master. I don't want to talk about myself now, but since you mentioned, we'll get to that at some point. Not about me talking about myself, but about koans. A koan is just what you said. It's uh, like a riddle that you can't solve. But we'll get into that. So <laughs> God, sorry to interrupt. Oh, you're fine. Uh, but uh, yeah, so like I said, I, I don't know much about him and his... Speak up a little bit. These uh, microphones are way over there. Gotcha. Um, I don't know much about him and his younger life. Just the stories he's told me. But um, the main stuff I know is that he did have that uh, career where he owned Seuss, which was taking um, adolescence kids who are just struggling in life, I guess you could say. Yeah. Always angry, making, like, flipping out, having panic attacks, whatever. Um, taking them out into the desert, which is right here behind Bliss, uh, Bliss, Idaho. And you take them out for about two weeks and teach them survival skills. Uh, he would give them... In the winter, a wool blanket or two, and then you get like a tarp, and that's it. That's your shelter. Um, and then he'll teach you how to make a fire with bow, bow drill and flint nap. Uh, he showed me how to make a coal bed, which is uh, coal. Yeah, coal. So you take your spot, whatever you're looking, just where you're going to sleep for tonight. Uh, you kind of chip it back where the rocks and dirt is to make a flat surface put a fire there, and when that fire burns, burns down, you got your coals. Oh, yeah. And you put the dirt back over it, and in about seven minutes, you instantly are warm. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he said that he's been in, like, below zero weather, and sleeping on that coal bed keeps him around 80 degrees at night. So. Wow, that's something great to learn, oh, just yeah. that. Yeah. And then, Very cool. so he's taken me out a few times, probably around five times, just to do that kind of stuff. With a group of other? Um, yeah, we did it uh, with a group when I was younger, and then just recently, about two weeks ago, he took me and my brother out. Oh, really? We spent a, a night out there in the Isn't desert. Isn't that great? Yeah, we. Uh, I didn't. He said to just pack stuff to uh, to do it, and I kind of wanted to test myself really, so I didn't take anything. Great. And so we tied a uh, fishing line to a, a stick. And put a hook on it and caught grasshoppers and went fishing with that you just got to pull it pull them in really you don't get a line or anything yeah. um we didn't catch anything <laughs> yeah so yeah our main dinner then was a uh, dough and water just mix it together and throw it in the ashes and it cooks you can put peanut butter on it if you want but yeah we when i did that when i was little that's what we pretty much lived off of was ash cakes and whatever we could Fine. Ash cakes, that's a yeah. great name too. Ash cakes, yeah. He taught me how to make traps for coal killing. sleeping and ash cakes. Yeah, coal sleeping and ash cakes. That's how you live out there. Yeah. And then whatever you kill, like I said, traps. He showed me how to make traps for like squirrels and bunnies. Nice, nice. But yeah, so he did that for a long time with those kids, and he made quite a good surplus of money. But he, uh, over the years, he's pretty much just uh, either given it to people who need it more. Or uh, just kind acts, really. Yeah, um, yeah. Charity, stuff like that. And so he's down to just living off whatever the government gives him. And he yeah. lives there down in Hagerman on a, in a yurt. And just, I go over there when I can. And I try to learn as much as I can from him. Yeah, you're, you're great to realize what a treasure trove you have in your grandfather. That I think that's great. I heard about him too. You know, I was teaching up and teaching meditation up up uh, in Ketchum, Idaho, and one of my students, who was a sort of a troubled young person, but a good kid, and uh, his parents sort of forced him, I think, to come take my classes yeah. because his mom was a student of mine, and uh, so then he became a student, and it was he that took your grandfather's. Seuss program. How do you spell that, Seuss? 
Uh, I believe there was S U E S, maybe two S's at the end. Yeah, something like that. And oh, we should have started out at the beginning. Uh, you should introduce yourself again. Just say your name and that this is the number two in oh. the series. I'm Ryan Morris or Tichakis. Uh, two names, different sides of, of the family. And this is part two. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, okay. Five minutes already. Uh, so, continue where you were. Or, yes. or should I ask you some questions, maybe? Uh, I can uh, just, just keep I can going. Just get to where he's at in life right now, pretty much. That's all. That's he's all he what? did. Just where he's at in life right now. Okay. Because that's all he really did for a long time. Um, yeah, he's pretty famous in the area. Yeah. About the Seuss program is famous. Yeah. So then once he once he was done with that, he gave that he gave the whole operation to his friend, and he took it to uh, West Virginia. Um, oh really? I didn't know that. I I just thought it stopped. Yeah. But his friend is doing. He has a different name for it now, but it's up in West Virginia now. So then he, he kind of just laid back. He met Laura, my grandma, and uh, she was living on a hippie commune. And that's Where was that at? West Virginia. West Virginia. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. Um, and that's she. I think she had all three of the kids by that time, which would be my mom, my aunt, and my other aunt, all three girls. Um, and so they're kind of, they were dating for a while, and I think they split up for a little bit. And then when uh, my mom went to jail, um, and it was all my siblings just kind of scattered throughout. Uh, we were either going to go to foster care, or someone had to take care of us. And yeah. so Lara, she, uh, she wound us all up, and she called Dennis when she was in some other state doing whatever. And I was like, hey, I've got these kids. Are you in or are you out? Who's Laura now? She, she's Dennis's wife. Dennis's wife. And so that's when he decided I'm in, and so he became my grandpa, and not by blood, but he's my grandpa now. Yeah. And he has been the biggest influence of my life. Yeah. That's great. You have somebody like that. Tell me some of the other things, or if you want to build up to it more, I keep on referring to the clock because we've got to keep these under ten minutes. Uh, is it too soon to ask you to mention some of the things that he's taught you? Just about, he told me two things already. The ash. Ash cakes. <laughs> ash cakes and sleeping on coal. So I, yeah, so he's taught me, obviously, the survival tactics. And then, um, mainly just kind of like how to treat people. Which we can talk about in the next video because these are going to be long. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, good. That's how to important. treat people and how to be at peace with yourself and just to be a better person and all. And that's all that has been through meditation and uh, kind of just, I don't know how to explain it, but he's, he's definitely done a good way of teaching it. Yeah, yeah. I, like I say, I've heard about him. You know, 30 years ago, or 25 anyway, about 30, and uh, how good that program was, the Seuss program. So, uh, wrap it up, and then we'll go into the next one, or we could stop it now, and then you can talk about what you thought was going to take a long time. Yeah, well, we can go ahead and stop it then. Cool.